This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. And today I want to talk about a recent development in the Warhammer 40k lore that I think missed the mark. I think Games Workshop may have royally screwed up the Necrons. Keyword, royally. The reemergence of the Necrons king, his, their god king, Cesarek, the Silent King. It's very cool. It's very cool to see Cesarek come back. But first, I want to get into why, what Games Workshop was doing that was working really, really well. Because that's important to know when I get, when I really dig into the Necrons a little bit. So the, ne the Games Workshop has been working on making outcasts for each faction. They did a great job with the Tau. The Farsight Enclave have rejected the rule of the Ethereals and they have moved away from classical Tau society and they have forged a path on their own. They are, they're taking their lives into their own hands. They're forging their own path. They're forging their own narrative. And it's a very cool thing in the world of Warhammer. You can sort of make your army however you want. You can give them whatever background or lore that you want, but the Games Workshop giving you permission to really step outside of the norms and make something that is genuinely good or genuinely admirable is actually a really, really cool thing. And it's great. It's great to have that little glimmer of hope in an otherwise hopeless situation. Similarly, the Eldar, they have the new Yanari, which is a collection of outcasts from the Harlequins, the Eldar, and the Dark Eldar who are working together to resurrect a god, the Whispering God, Yanid. They believe that if they can, if they can resurrect Yanid, that Yanid will be able to defeat Slanesh and rescue the Eldar race from extinction because the Eldar, all Eldar souls who die will go to Slanesh. The Eldar are completely doomed, but perhaps this plan will work. Perhaps if they all can put aside their differences and work together for the greater good, although not the Tau's greater good, that they can finally get something done. They can bring a little bit of light to this dark, dark world of Warhammer. They won't, they're going to fail, but it's gonna be so interesting to see how these outcasts get it done and how they try and how they work so hard and that inevitable failure will be a lovely dousing of tragedy. It's perfect for Warhammer. I love the idea of these outcast factions and it's such an interesting way to add new things into Warhammer without having to add entire new factions or really progress the lore in any serious way. Because although I am enjoying the progression of lore that's happening with Games Workshop, it does lead to how far are they willing to go? Are they willing to let the Emperor die? Are they willing to let Gazgul turn back into a, a, a super orc? What are the super orcs called? The Krorks. Are they, are they going to allow things to really change? Probably not, and they probably shouldn't. But creating new characters who have new ambitions and they can have a little bit of hope that can be dashed is a beautiful, beautiful way to really, really accent the world of Warhammer. And Games Workshop had a lovely, a lovely chance to do this with the return of Cesarek, the Silent King. Now, for all of you who haven't read a Necron Codex since 2002, Matt Ward, love him or hate him, he wrote some darn good Necron lore in The War in Heaven. The War in Heaven is one of my favorite things in all of Warhammer. In my opinion, it's a more epic and more tragic tale than the Horus Heresy. And sure, we're talking about a story that's about 10 pages long versus 50 novels, but the Necrons are much less personal than the Space Marines because the Space Marines are essentially human. I know they're not human. They're essentially human. The perspective that you get from the Horus Heresy is humans and the hubris of man where the, the Necron story, the story of the war in heaven is a story of gods. It's, it's Greek, it's beautiful. Way back, impossibly far back, 65 million years ago, the Necrons, the Necrotire, a race of these little shriveled Dobby looking guys were having a miserable time. They had a red giant sun right next to their planet. They died in their forties. They were having an absolutely miserable time. But there was another race, a paradise race, known as the Old Ones. They were the gods of the universe. They could do anything. They could control anything. And they were pretty reasonable, respectful, and humble. They, a good way to think of them is probably like the um, Starfleet from Star Trek. They're just kind of good. However, they had a firm belief in letting things pass the way that they were meant to. And so they were not, when, when the Necrons asked for their help, help save our lives from this horrible plight, the Old Ones said, 
nah, dog, you, you're on your own. You gotta, do, you gotta do what you gotta do. And so the Necrons found these beings called the Catan. And we're gonna get to the Catan because Games Workshop made a new one that I don't really like very much. They found these, these just ethereal beings. They had no form, but they would eat stars. And the, Catan, and the Necrotire, they created these metal bodies and the Catan came into them. The Shard of the, the, the Deceiver and the Nightbringer. And they started to whisper into the Necron's ears saying, hey, maybe if we work together, we can defeat the Old Ones. And then we can rule the galaxy as father and son. Okay, that, that, they didn't do that last part, but they decided to work together. And so they began to wage war against the Old Ones. And they got their butts kicked. They got destroyed. But the Catan had a trick up their sleeve. They said that they would turn the Necrotire into immortal Necrons, into ultra, unbelievably powerful Necrons. And Cesarek was the one who signed the deed. He was the one who said, yes, we will go through this biotransference to leave our poor shriveled Necrotire bodies for gleaming metal bodies. The Necrons will glitter in the sun and they will be unstoppable. And it happened exactly that way, except while every Necrotire was going through biotransference, the Catan ate every one of their souls. So when they went from their body into their Necron bodies, they lost what made them them. And Cesarek looked upon his galaxy-spanning empire that was now completely soulless automatons. Necron warriors are barely even robots. They're literally just animated suits of armor. And he was absolutely devastated. He could barely handle the tragedy he had just committed his species to. He had doomed them all, including himself. He no longer had a soul. He no longer had emotion, I guess, except for misery. Because <laughs> he was just that upset that misery was still there. And so he went along with the Catan. They worked together to defeat the Old Ones. They conquered the universe. And then, in his last act of necrotiremanity, he turned his legions because he had complete control over the Necron race. They, he had the cheat codes. He could control them all with just the flick of his wrist. He waged war upon the Catan, and unable to destroy them because they are gods, he trapped them in the Necron shards. And then as his last action, because he had completely screwed every single thing up, he told all of his Necrons to go to sleep. Because this war in heaven, this war against gods, destroyed everything. There was nothing left. So the Necrons decided to just wait for the galaxy to repopulate, for everything to heal. And so he told all of his Necrons to go to sleep. And then he destroyed his command protocols, releasing all of the Necrons. So they all have some semblance of free will now. And he left. He, he just went out into the world like, like, uh, like the end of Pulp Fiction. He just went to wander the galaxy because he was so unbelievably ashamed. Beautiful. Gives me chills, that story. And please go on to, I'm sure all of the Warhammer wikis have the proper, the whole thing written out verbatim. It, you'll read it and it'll sound way better than when I just explained it to you. The story of Cesaric leaving, just utterly defeated and miserable, is kind of in a way noble. Just releasing his command over all of his Necrons and going into exile is kind of nice. It's a nice little thing, like he's kind of honorable. He royally messed up, but he did the honorable thing and left. And then he came back. Oh, Games Workshop, I get, I get it. And there, I think there's ways to have brought him back, but the way Games Workshop brought him back, so it's it feels rather lame. So Cesarek was traveling the cosmos and he ran into the Tyranids. And then he thought, uh-oh, these Tyranids might be able to wipe out all life in the galaxy. And if all life is wiped out, then there will be no bodies with souls that maybe my Necrons will one day be able to put themselves inside of and then regain their mortality and their life. And it's kind of confusing. And so I better go back home and make sure that we defeat these Tyranids. Eh, is that good enough? The Necrons are truly unbelievably powerful beings. Did the Silent King really need to return to rescue them from the Tyranids? I mean, eh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good enough reason. But have him, even if he, even if that's a good reason for him to return, to try to save the possibility of the Necrons ever being able to rec reclaim souls, he showed up with a lot of fanfare. Let's, if you look at the model for the Silent King, 
And before that, undead robot androids are all squares, right? And the screen you're watching this on right now is a square. Well, if you've ever wanted to display your skills and abilities online, then Squarespace is the place to be. Squarespace is the easy-to-use online website builder that makes it possible for anybody to have a pleasing, polished, and professional-looking website. Whether you need to host that image that encapsulates your unique brand, it can be hosted on your very own Squarespace website perfectly rendered in size using their automatic image scaling. And if you want to create an online shop to hold your merchandise and display it proudly to the world and your customers, Squarespace's store pages are easy to set up. With tons of award-winning templates to choose from, however you envision your unique website, Squarespace has got you covered. So head on over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use our code Eons of Battle to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. He's very regal. He's very noble. He's 12 and a half feet tall. He feels like a king, but I would argue he is no longer a king. He relinquished that title when he decided to leave in disgrace. I would have liked him to come back a little bit more humble. You know, have him be a little taller than the average Necron, but maybe have him be like Master Chief in that one in that one trailer where he's got like a, a, a cloak on. Like have him look a little bit downtrodden. He's uh, Some Necrons have decided to align themselves with him, but he no longer has complete control over the Necrons. They, it's their choice whether to work with him or not. And this amazing, immaculate throne with a Catan shard housed in it and these giant obelisk pillars, it's a little hoity-toity. It's a little high and mighty, and that is the last thing that I feel like Cesaric would be. Cesaric is an honorable man, and he royally screwed up. He shouldn't be... Uh, uh, the emperor. He shouldn't be the king. He's not really a god. I'm sure he's very, very powerful, but I just wish he was a little bit more humble. It's cool. It's cool to have a big, important Necron leader who's super, super tall and he's got the biggest stick. And you know he's the big boy because he's got the big stick. And he's got his little helpers who are, I don't know, dictating, being dictated to. And it's just... It's just not Necrons to me. I do kind of like the model, but it's just I love the story of Cesarex so much. And I love the, the lore of the Necrons. And it's just kind of not there for me, this way that, ne that Games Workshop has decided to go with it. Yes, they wanted a big, important centerpiece model for every single faction. And I think there would have been ways to do it. Once again, going back into the Outcasts idea, maybe Cesara comes back as kind of a humble person, but some Necrons kind of almost take pity on him, and they understand that they that he is looking out for their best interest, and so they decide to band together. And maybe he even figures out ways of helping the Flayed Ones and the Destroyers, who are Necrons who are just slowly succumbing to millions upon millions upon millions of years of just their bodies falling apart. Maybe he has ways to tinker around and repair them. Maybe he even be starts to begin the process of, of putting Necrons back into bodies with souls, and we get the Pariahs back. The Pariahs were a old, old unit for the Necrons that has since been discontinued, but they were essentially Necron zombies. Necrons who were, they were trying to like reanimate corpses. And there would be, there, you know, there's lots of really, really cool ways to take it so that the, the Cesarek and his, you know, loyal merry band of Necron cohorts are fun and spunky and you, you, wish, them the, you wish them the best. But having Cesarek, the Silent King, who's actually pretty chatty, having him up on a giant floating throne with a regal, beautiful flowing cape, you know? Exile is supposed to be exile. You're not supposed to come back. You should have a really, really darn good reason. And it kind of makes me feel like he got bored out there. And then he ran into the Tyrod and he's like, you know, it's not a great reason, but he thinks he can spin it. He thinks he can spin it back into him getting to come back and uh, hang out with his old friends. It's just, it's just not right in my opinion. Th this is what we have now. This is Cesara. Games Workshop is not going to discontinue this model, but... It's just not doing it for me. And speaking of another new Necron unit that is not doing it for me, Catan Shard of the Void Dragon. This model is lovely. It is a beautiful model, but in my opinion, once again, it does not fulfill the lore of the Necrons. The Necrons hate the Catan, and the only reason that they're still around is because they couldn't just they can't destroy them. They're unkillable. And so they took each Catan and they tore it into shards, and each one of those shards is held in a Necron tomb. 
to be unleashed on the battlefield. It's like their atomic bombs, basically. It's their weapons of mass destruction, even more massive than the Necrons already impossibly magical technology. This miniature feels very powerful and regal and noble and and open. I mean, this 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 shape is open. It's presenting yourself. What if the lightning bolts were kind of constraining the wrists of this being? Or, you know, they were they were chaining him down. Like, because the Necrons are in control of the Catan. They and they will never ever be free ever again. And so even though this miniature is lovely, and I suppose if you didn't know the lore of the Catan, you would think, like, yeah, that's a that's a Satan or Catan shard of, of something or other. I don't really like it. I don't really like it. It goes against what I know the Necrons are. And uh, it's just, it's just meh. It's just meh, you know, I'm very disappointed. I actually found a miniature uh, that I really, really love. And it really, really spoke to me the way that old Necron lore really did. It got me right in the feels. And that is this miniature from the artist, the final triarch, Cyborg Triumvirate, King of Ambition. This miniature to me is Cesaric. This is the Silent King. There's just a sadness to him. Obviously, he's more impressive than the other Necrons because his outfit has got more going on. You know, he looks like the king of the Necrons, but there's just something defeated about him. I think it's the way that his 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 little danglies form into a cloak, the way he's kind of got a little bit of a hood and it's kind of pulled up. The little tear tracks that are sculpted into his face. There's a sadness to this model, and that's what I think that that, that the real hashtag the real Silent King would have just somebody utterly defeated. He, he has no ambition, although this guy's called ambitious, but he, in my opinion, Sarek has no ambition. All he wants is to fix what he did and it's impossible. And that the tragedy of that is what makes his character so, so compelling. And if I ever want to field the Silent King, I'm definitely going to have to put something together so that this guy is my king because that is, that's just what I love about the Necrons. I adore the Necrons. They are my first army in Warhammer 40k. I have about 6,000 points of them. I painted them up in high school. I repainted them a few times in high school. I repainted them again after high school. I love the Necrons so much. They were my very first ever, ever descent into this war world of Warhammer. And I, I took the fifth or the, uh, yeah, the fifth edition Necron Codex to school with me every single day in my backpack. And I read it every bus ride and every every lunch period. I would reread the stories over and over and over. And I, I adore the Necrons. And that is why I have such strong opinions about these new miniatures, because at the end of the day, who cares? These miniatures look great. What on earth do I have to complain about? But I hope I hope I have somehow managed to get across my feelings about why the new Cesarek is hashtag not my Cesarek. But you know what I do absolutely love? That's right, our Patreon. Over there, we have a new STL terrain pack available every single month, perfect for games like Warhammer 40,000 or Kill Team. This month, we have the Starship Bridge, a grimdark throne room complete with stained glass windows and lots and lots of modular grimdark details. We also make one extra episode of Eons of Battle every single week where we take a look at our viewers' miniatures and give us some ideas and critiques of how to improve their painting. And you can get your name on one of my Black Templar Space Marines and you can join the Legion. I really do love the Necrons, and I really do love what Games Workshop's doing with these new outcast factions for their different armies in Warhammer 40k, but uh, it just breaks my heart what they did to my Necron boys at the start of 8th edition Warhammer. I'll never recover. Thanks for watching.